Hello, everybody, and welcome to Live at Five. And we know we're a little bit late today. Unforeseen circumstances, but it doesn't matter. It's the first day of summer. It is. It's also National Selfie Day. Thank you. Look I'm Beth Stevens. <laughs> and I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we are here in the studio with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have one of my favorite people yes, our guest today. Uh, me too. Michael Benjamin Washington Woo! from The Boys in the Band is here talking with us. I'm really um, excited about that, but first yeah. we're going to do our top five. We got some jellical news today. <laughs> I knew, I knew that's what, how you were going to intro it. With jazz hands. I knew it. With jazz hands. I knew it. Uh, wow. Yes, we have a cats movie update. So I think a while ago we mentioned that like twenty years cats, ago. Oh yes, that cats was going to be turned into a movie. Six degrees but of where separation. was it first mentioned? Thank there you. we go. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yes. Um, but now it's like really happening. And Tom Hooper, who directed the Les Misérables movie, yes, he is did. directing. Um, we know that rehearsals for it are going to begin in September, and then they'll begin shooting in November, and we know that Wayne McGregor is choreographing, and then that's it. That's, that's all. basically all we that's know. That's yeah. it. We know, um, what, no, we know something we else. Know no oh, cast working members. title films and Universal Studios are coming together to make the thing, um, but release date, cast, are some of your Broadway favorites going to be in it? Is Betty Buckley going back to it? We don't know. We don't know any of this. None of it. No. But it's happening. Cats movie. It's not animated. It's, it's a no, real thing. Live action. Just saying. yes. And hopefully we'll get those Tom Hooper, you know, like <laughs> super right close on to the, the face. of the kitty yes, cats as they're belting. Yeah, as they're jellicling. Yeah, jellicling. It's gonna be great. <laughs> jellicling. It's not a verb. Not that's a, verb. a new, new, new <laughs> verb. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and some of the some of Broadway's biggest stars are giving back to high schoolers. Right, so we know the Jimmy Awards are happening soon. Mm -hmm. They're happening on June 25th at 7.30 at the Minskoff Theater. That's now right. we know some presenters, so let me let you know. Newly minted Tony winner, Ariel Stachel, who sat right here mm -hmm. very recently. Not long ago. Kyle Selig. Who also sat here and participated in the Jimmy Awards before. Oh, ah, look Aww. at you yes. knowing things. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Christine Lee Josie of SpongeBob SquarePants. Super standout. Have my heart. Just tons of people. And this is hosted by Tony winner Laura Benanti, and this celebrates high school theater. That's what's so cool about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Who go on to do great things, a lot of them. So Correct. I love them. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. And an upcoming Broadway debut already has something new in the works. Yes. So Ty Defoe, who we all, we took like a poll earlier in the room. Mm -hmm. We all love Ty Defoe. Mm -hmm. And he's making his Broadway debut in Straight White Men very soon. Mm -hmm. But then he's venturing off Broadway with a Zizek on Turtle Island. Um, it's part of New Victory Theater's 2018-2019 season. It follows a whooping crane that is separated whooping. from its mother and has to migrate from Canada to Texas all by itself. And I think the message of the show is to like inspire a new generation of eco champions. Oh, look at that! And New look Victory so, specializes in youth theater, theater exactly, for, for children. Exactly. The, it will feature puppets from the Jim Henson's Creature Shop oh. because you know it's about a whooping crane. Got it. So, you know, you yeah, gotta, have to, gotta, yeah. gotta represent. That. It will run mm -hmm. March first through the tenth of 2019, so it's a little ways away. Um, but he has to make his Broadway debut first, you know. Um, and it will feature June music. June 29th. By, yes. at the Hayes <laughs> exactly. Uh, it is written by Defoe and features music by Kevin Durant, Grammy nominee Don Avery, and Grammy winner Larry Mitchell. It sounds super interesting. Um, I believe it happened at La Mama before. Oh, oh. Tony winning um, La Mama. Yes, so it's now headed New Victory. So make sure you go see it. Ty's Next such year. such a talented person. Next spring. So yes. talented, yeah. And we don't have any heartbreak over this casting news. It's Thank good. you, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, heartbreak <laughs> House. <laughs> <laughs> That's the George Bernard Shaw classic. Uh, is going to go to Theater Row off Broadway. But listen to this cast. This is a pretty Crazy. fancy cast. We've got Tony Winner, Karen Ziemba, Tony nominee Allison Frazier, and Tony nominee Tom Hewitt. David Stoller is directing. Previews begin August 28th, and opening is scheduled for September 9th. It's a quickie. It closes September 29th. Oh, okay. Yeah. So get in there. A see a classic window. show with really amazing, talented yeah, some people. Of the best there. Very good. So what else do we have yeah, on the docket? The boys are back. They came back together. The yes. bandstand boys are back together. The, the boys, not the boys in the band. Not the boys no. in the band. And the they're boys not in the bandstand. The band there are they're a lot of things visiting. to follow here. <laughs> it is not today. It is bandstand. So we know bandstand is headed into theaters through Fathom Events, seven hundred different locations across the country. You can see it on June twenty fifth and June twenty eighth. Tickets are on sale now. We went to the premiere last night here mm -hmm. in the city. We've got some great photos of all of the wonderful people from the show, including its writer, uh, its director, choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler, 
Laura Osnes was there, Corey Cott was there, of course, special guests course. all around. Yeah, um, lots of original cast members. You can see our full members. coverage. And then make sure you go see it in theaters June 25th and June 28th because it's an incredible show, and we loved it. Ryan. Yeah. Happy summer to you. Thank you so much, Beth. <laughs> happy summer to you. Make sure you take a selfie before the day's oh. out. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that. Yes. Uh, Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest today? Of course. Guys, we have Michael Benjamin in the studio today. He is currently in The Boys in the Band, and he has previously been on Broadway in La Cage of Fall. I think I might have said that right. And La Cage of Fall. And he was in Mamma Mia. Um, his screen credits include Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, 30 Rock, Save the Date, Law and Order. I could go on and on because he's been in so many amazing things. Be sure to follow him on social media at Michael B. Washington and leave all of your questions for him in the comments below. Everybody, please w welcome Michael Benjamin and Beth. Hello, everyone. Hello, Michael Benjamin Hi, Washington. Beth. How this are you doing? so excited to be here. We're excited to have you because you're one of our favorite people. Yeah. I don't know why. Sometimes you meet someone like a long time ago, like a real long time ago, and you're just like, mm. And to see you Talented. where you are now, yeah. killing right, it. Right where I was before, building. yes. <laughs> killing it. Killing it. How's it going over there in the boys in the band? I think we're having a little bit too much fun. Oh. <laughs> and I think we're going to have to turn that it down a little party. bit. It is a party. It is. At least at the beginning. It is. But yeah. we venture back 50 years to 1968 every single night, and somehow we all get on the same page. We're having a ball. We're having a blast. We have a big old birthday party, and people seem to love it. Well, it is a wonderful cast yeah. of just heavy, hitting, heavy hitters and real stage actors. You might know their names from the movies or from TV, but they are real stage actors, and mm -hmm. that's something mm -hmm. special, too. Yeah, every night at the end of the show, Jim Parsons and Brian Hutchinson do this sparring dance. I call it uh, Venus and Serena go head to head. <laughs> And to think that they studied getting their MFA at Old Globe together, and now they're on a Broadway stage doing that, those kinds of things are uh, Matt Bomer and Zach Quinto training We have a lot Carnegie. of Texans in this cast. We do. You? We do. You're a Texan. I'm a Texan. Matt Bomer, I've known him for 20 years as a Texan. Jim, and Parsons, Jim Parsons. And Lee Pace, our buddy down the street at uh, Angels, Angels in America. America. Yeah, we used to compete in speech and debate tournaments together. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Wait, are you serious? Oh, Lee Pace, if he was at a tournament, I'd be like, I'm hungry. Where is he? Let's go. <laughs> We get to the one-act play contest. I did Six Degrees of Separation, and he was doing The Heiress. Oh, he got Best Actor. I'm so glad you were here when we were talking about the Cats movie, because you were like, I get the reference. I do. Just I do. watch the movie. It's a great movie. You'll, it is you'll, good. You'll, you'll, you'll understand what we're talking about. <laughs> well, I love you in this role because... Thank you. Well, and Robin DeJesus was here, mm -hmm. and I talked to him about this as well. And you have something in common with... Mr. Robin DeJesus, mm -hmm. which was that you were both in revivals of La, Ca of La Cage Full. Very good. There you go. Uh, yeah. It's okay. You, <laughs> not everyone took French in high school. It's you know. okay. Right. And, uh, and you played the same role. Yes, we did. In two different revivals, uh -huh. years apart. I was in the 2005 revival directed by Jerry Zaks, playing Jacob, the mm -hmm. butler maid, and then he did the 2010 revival. And he was the first of the three Broadway Jacobs to get nominated for a Tony. Because he's just that cute. He's amazing. And he's good in the heels. Yeah. <laughs> he's good in the heels. And but in you, sneakers, but didn't you, good. But wait, wait, let's just go back in time for a second. We'll get back to Boys and Band. Didn't you audition in heels for that role? I did. <laughs> Tell us about it. I did. I was like, what does one wear to play a cross-dressing butler maid to Jerry Zach's? It is a good question. And I decided to wear patent leather heels with like... What color? They were black. Patent leather heels with a bow. They really were black. Mm -hmm. And I actually wore them in the show as the maid. <laughs> And I sang, I enjoy being a girl. Aww. And the look on Jerry Zax's face <laughs> was worth the price of NYU. I got to say, <laughs> just to see that man be like, are you really doing this in front of me right now? You were like, I am, I sir. Am. Yeah. I am. And I had three callbacks. And I did it for him three more times to just to prove <laughs> that it wasn't a fluke. In the heels every time? Every time. Oh, my God. What people I'm do committed. in this business. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the boys and man. Yeah. One of the things I love about this production is it has to be a period piece. It's 1968. It's pre-Stonewall, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And you are really digging into that period. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, yeah. what you're doing, but I, it's something about your cadence mm -hmm. and uh, certainly your look and your, you know, of course, costumes and everything will affect your posture. Tell me about finding well, that period. the past four years I've been writing a play, or I wrote a play about Bayard Rustin, the yes. openly gay civil rights leader who put together the March on Washington in 1963. And that was developed uh, directorially by Felicia Rashad, who really worked on me with the period and the voice oh, so and the carriage. So there are Miss Rashad-esque 
type things that flowed into my performance. Well, if you're going to be mentored art. by a goddess. Hello. <laughs> you must emulate her, too. Yeah, so that really helped me in terms of understanding, too, what you can and can't do in mm -hmm. a room of all white men, especially mm -hmm. when the racial stuff gets really charged mm -hmm. up. Yeah. There's a certain lid that has to be put on it that Mr. Mantello and I worked extensively on. You know, I really tried to push against him. Like, it's 68, and the Huey Newton, and the yeah, Black the Power movement. Yeah, the anger is bubbling over, but not in this play. Not in this play, and not in this room at this time. You know. And it, in some ways, you could say he's a token person of color, mm -hmm. but in other ways, how is he part of the circle? Well, I always rationalize that he happens to be going to his Jewish friend Harold's birthday party uh -huh. on a Saturday night. Does As that mean do. he doesn't have any black friends? So I assume that tomorrow he's having brunch with Jimmy Baldwin. But As you do. <laughs> in this particular evening, how do you survive? Your, uh, Joe asked me, he said, um, you have to figure out what is the cost of being in this room and what is the price to remain in this tribe? And wow. that became like the thesis of Bernard for me. And it really was exciting because, you know, Joe is so great about saying, I don't know the answer to your questions. And I would ask him like all the heavy hitting But you ones. also have the playwright there. Mark Crowley was around, Yeah. Right? Well, when we got into previews into New York, we rehearsed in LA for three mm -hmm. weeks. So I had wrote Mark to ask him when I hit a wall, like, why did you write a, a black man into this all white tribe? Good question. And he told me about this story of, of, of a boy named Clarence from his youth that Bernard is based on. And suddenly I realized that the playwright was putting himself in the character, mm -hmm. that it wasn't just a device. It wasn't just, as you said, a, to a token. It's not. It's more personal. It's a human being. Mm -hmm. And how do you make him come alive eight times a week, even if this, you know, the text is limited? Yeah. But we never leave the stage, and all of us are on it the whole time. So yeah. it's up to you to bring a life to it. And it's so good, you guys. It's Go so see good. it. Thank you. All right, but let's talk about your play some more. So mm. you are a writer. I am. And you're developing some new work, aren't you? I <laughs> am. I also am. in this period. Uh huh. Which is Go so on. ironic. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was um, contacted by Maya Angelou's estate after my play about Because that Barbara. happens to <laughs> everyone, right? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> my agent calls like, you like Maya Angelou, don't you? They're looking for a writer for her story. And I had lunch with her grandson, Colin Johnson, and the head of her estate, the Cage Bird Foundation. And we sat down. And I pitched this play about April 4th, 1968, her 40th birthday, when right. she was planning a party to tell her bougie New York friends why she was leaving the Black Power Movement to return to Dr. King's philosophy of nonviolence. Mm -hmm. On her 40th birthday, April 4th, he was assassinated while waiting for her to join him, and she slipped into mutism for the second time. Yeah. So I've been writing a play about April 4th and, and her birthday And she stopped party. celebrating her birthday after she that, did, right? She did, for a long yes. time. For a long time until Coretta Scott King got her to start celebrating it again. So when this play came up about April 14th, 1968, for a birthday party while I was writing this play. This play takes place on April 14th. I didn't know the date. That's when it opened off Broadway, so that's kind of when we oh, set it. Oh, we were just setting it then. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so. This is really getting deep, you guys. It is yeah. deep. It is deep. Wow. So, that so was you're fun. developing this play about Maya Angelou, mm -hmm. and you wrote about Bayard Rustin. I did. Are you ever going to leave 1968? Well, I think it's time to leave the 60s. <laughs> okay. I'm, like, right. yeah. okay. I'm just asking. Yeah, we're going to go to the 70s eventually. <laughs> we got to get to Mahogany. Right. <laughs> Do you guys know who Mahogany is? Let me tell you. Michael Benjamin Washington had an alter al uh, alternate... Alter alternate, ego. Alter ego. I'm trying yep. to think of the right word. Uh-huh. And you were amazing. Thank and this you. was during the Lacage time, right? Yeah, it was during Mamma Mia. I was um, playing a, the wisecracking best friend, Eddie, slash understudy to Joe Mahota, who was the leading man, and I'd go on. Now power agent, Joe yes, Mahota. Yes, my buddy. And uh, <laughs> he would never miss, but when he did, I finally got to go on and be a leading man at the Winter Garden. You got and to be Sky. I got to be Sky. And cool. I was like, oh, well, that was fun. Did that. Now <laughs> let's see what else I can do to <laughs> scare my agents. So I wrote a two-act play about an up-and-coming uh, black songstress named Mahogany, the Ebony Enchantress, and I would do it on Monday nights at Joe's Pub. Yes, you would, and it was amazing. This is based on the Diana Ross. The name comes from the, the Diana name, Ross. The name, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Holiday movie. Isn't yeah. that what it is? It was, yeah. Yeah. Late, uh, well, actually, the Billy Holiday was Lady Sings the Blues, but oh, Mahogany Sings was, was. She okay. was a fashion she was designer. In, she was in a movie called Mahogany. Look <laughs> it up, you guys. I know what I'm talking about, sort of. Google but it. <laughs> Google. YouTube Google. that. You'll like it. Yeah, so I wrote this play, and I would do it, and she would start to host things for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, and Alan Cumming and I would do it. She like was that. around. Dancers responding to AIDS, hosting things like yeah, that. So that became charity. fun. And it was just a way for me to practice my writing and seeing what that was like. You really have always had this alter alternate career. I'm just getting I stuck on it. that word today. Let's make as up a our writer, own language. It's as a good. writer. Yeah. And you were a, a journalism minor. Mm hmm. I know things. You so, do. <laughs> so, I'm so but you're a theater major. Yeah. And and so you've always had this urge to write, and it's always. really paying off for you. Always. I love to tell stories. But you never stopped performing, did no. you? No. 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 Even when I tried to, like when I was in Texas writing this, 
you know, I didn't have an agent manager publicist at the time. And when I got the call to do this, it's like, yeah, I'll come back to do this for a minute, but I do want to go back behind the table and keep creating villages for other people to oh, that's perform. So, kind. so you're not just writing for yourself, you're writing plays for others. Others. Yes, 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 others. yes. Telling stories. Mm -hmm. Which is fun. It's really fun to be able to create, you know, an alternate universe for other people to play in. So when you guys are getting ready at the Boys in the Band mm -hmm. to go on stage, do you listen to music from the 60s? I do. <laughs> so funny you ask that. Really? I what do, do you listen to? Well, uh, you a lot have a turntable backstage. I assume it's just like it. No, Robin <laughs> has a turntable upstairs. But I listen to a lot of Marvin Gaye. For whatever reason, the tone of his voice just sits right in my ear. And I'm like, yes, Bernard would, Bernard would go to a Marvin Gaye concert on Friday night. He would be, there's something be sultry and yeah. soulful and and yet fun, mm -hmm. you know, it's a fun party that we have over at the booth until it turns kind of dark. Right, it's mm -hmm. fun until someone gets hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I know we have questions uh, from you guys, so mm -hmm. let's take a few and then we're gonna get out of here. Sure thing. So Bree says, I saw your show, um, uh, I saw your amazing show this past week and wondered how you think your character story continued after the, when he went home. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a good question. Mm -hmm. I think everyone wants to know we that. We know you wrote that full character <laughs> set yeah, here. Oh, <laughs> yes. What happens when we turn the corner? Yeah. Robin, and, Robin and I have a, a beautiful exit together, and, and people always ask what happens when you walk down the hall mm -hmm. and down the stairs. And I believe he has to make a big decision about what tribe he wants to be a member of mm -hmm. after this. Considering that Dr. King was assassinated 10 days before this play takes place, yeah. and the great integration experiment is mm -hmm. imploding. Bobby Kennedy dies two months later. Right. It's okay. like, where does he sit with these people? And I think he's gonna not go get a drink. He's gonna mm -hmm. go sleep it off and have to make some big decisions tomorrow mm -hmm. after his brunch with Jimmy Baldwin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's what we he's gonna do. We got a full story going. Yep. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people wanna know, how do you get into your emotions? Because you know, after you make that phone call, no spoilers, but mm -hmm. you really get it in there. It is a 50-year-old play. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's okay. How do you get to that moment? How do you get to that part? Well, one of the things that Joe and I talk about is how necessary it is to shut up at least an hour and a half before the curtain mm -hmm. and just try to let this world go away, mm -hmm. 2018 mm -hmm. fall away. And so, Put on the Marvin Gaye. Yeah, and the reality of what it was then. We had a hard time in rehearsal room remembering how detrimental everything was to these men mm -hmm. in terms of identity. And so to forget the magical To forget Pride Month. Yes, exactly. Yeah, all of the stuff that you see walking here. The freedom that yeah. we mm -hmm. get, or the kids outside of the stage door who are coming with their parents who mm -hmm. accept them fully, or you know who are the head of their LGBTQ communities right. and, and organizations. It's so hard to forget that and go back. So it really is just about being quiet and mm -hmm. letting the ancestors and the elders come in. Mm -hmm. There's so many beautiful uncles who aren't here who we lost mm -hmm. during the AIDS plague oh, who yeah. I feel, you can feel Including their Including original members of the original cast. Absolutely, yeah. many of them. Wow. You know what else, when we, the, the set design of this play is mm -hmm. really gorgeous. David Incredible. Zinn's work, who just won another Tony Award mm -hmm. for SpongeBob, but it's, a, it's almost like a little womb that they created inside that's yeah. very, um, engaging and beautiful and perfect and then there's a harsh light right outside the door right and that's where you're going back into absolutely it's, it's just a beautiful metaphor for what's going on and he's i asked david about it and he goes oh that's all joe mantello well i asked him too <laughs> and he's like yeah i wanted a red velvet jewelry tray to present these men on and so it's and a so gorgeous gorgeous yeah. red velvet world and it's so fun to play on that jungle gym every night it really it's is really great i love that we can do one more question nice. and how does it like has there what have the what has the stage door been like mm. for you like the stories that you've been told or how have, how have those interactions been it's really neat to see people who saw the original production and who've seen this one wow it's been great to see the kids as i just said who are so out and proud at a young age yeah. and look to us as not only an example of what it's what they can be but what is now possible because you know? it's wow. a completely out and proud gay cast mm -hmm. yeah and of, creative team, actually. Of many classically trained actors as well. So yes. they're like, well, I want to go to school and study to make sure that I can get in line for these kind of opportunities. Wow. That's been a big one. And then you That's have great. like some of the, you know, people who love Zachary Quinto from Star Trek who didn't sure. see the show and all of that. <laughs> they're but we love the, everyone. Just the fans, right, right. We welcome all at our borders. <laughs> but please see the show first, guys. Ooh. Just consider it. Please do. Yeah. Please do. We'd love to have you. Well, we're going to get out of here. Guys, go see the boys in the band at the Booth Theater. When does it close? August 11th. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. <laughs> yeah. But you still have time. Happy summer to you, and we will see you on Monday.